Some kid had gotten hurt at Jefferson High School last week. And of all places, the chemistry lab. My partner, Bruno, and I were conducting the follow-up investigation. My name's Grumman, and I have to admit this is the first time I'd ever been called into a high school chem lab. But I have investigated my fair share of accidents. And one thing I've learned is that there's nothing accidental about them. Somebody goofed. Let's go, Bruno. Uh, Lieutenant, can I talk to you for a second? Hey, not now, Bruno. I'm busy. OK, you're the boss. The office sent us up to see Mr. Petrie, the chemistry teacher. He had an open period, so I figured he had plenty of time to talk with us. Bruno may not have been the brightest guy in the department, but he was a good man to have around. May I help you? All right. I'm Lieutenant Grumman. This is Sergeant Bruno. I think you know why we're here. The place looked real nice. It was all neat and orderly. Clean floors and uncluttered tabletops. The guy even had safety posters on the walls. Hard to imagine an accident happening here. It's very rare, but you know a chem lab can be a dangerous place. There are hazards everywhere. You're kidding. Where? Let me show you around. Uh, Lieutenant, can I talk to you a second? Not now, Bruno. I'm busy. Still busy. You see this? Yeah. Nitric acid. One drop can burn a hole through your skin. Hmm. Hydrochloric acid. Breathe too much of the fumes, and you could end up with permanent lung damage. And in here we have white phosphorus. Handle this the wrong way, watch out. Sodium. Mix this with water, boom. A typical chem lab has hundreds of different chemicals in it. If you're not careful with them, use some the wrong way. Mix two that shouldn't be mixed. Yeah, I see what you mean. Mr. Petrie told us how each and every chemical in his lab had been completely and properly labeled and stored in the proper manner. Flammable and volatile liquids were placed in a special storage cupboard. Caustic materials were on the lowest shelves, less chance of their falling, but they were off the floor in order to avoid contact with water. Incompatible chemicals, those that should be separated, were in different storage areas. It may have been a high school chem lab, but I could see this wasn't kid stuff. Then there are all the other dangers. There's more? Afraid so. Smell a chemical the wrong way, you could be out for the day. <coughs> Drink out of a beaker, I don't care how clean it looks. You never know what could happen. Oh. Squeeze bottles. Squeeze them too hard, somebody might not like it. Sorry. Light a gas burner the wrong way, and it could be lights out. Hey, you got some matches? Oh, no, sorry. Rebecca, you got some matches? Oh, no, I know, I'm sorry. Hey, you got some matches? Yeah. Here. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. Then there are spills. And slips. And falls. Oh, this place is a death trap. No, not at all. It's perfectly safe. As long as you pay attention and do things the right way. It's like I always tell my students. Be alert and proceed with caution. Makes sense. While it's extremely unlikely, accidents can happen and people can get hurt. And they must take the proper precautions to see that they don't. Like what? Like coming to class prepared for lab work. That means tying back long hair so it doesn't get in the way. Rolling up long shirt sleeves for the same reason. Removing loose and dangling jewelry. Shoes are important. Students should never wear sandals or other open-toed shoes. 
Using a lab apron is always a good idea. It not only protects clothing, but the skin as well. Splash-proof goggles are an absolute must, especially during experiments involving caustic or corrosive chemicals. Here's a little demonstration I show my students. This balloon contains acetone, red dye, and hydrogen. The head's of styrofoam. One has a pair of safety goggles, the other does not. I'm gonna simulate a small explosion, one you might encounter in a lab. If this were a kid, he'd probably be blind. This one, maybe some minor facial burns, but nothing compared to losing your sight. This guy seemed to have his acids and bases covered, so I decided to interview a few of his students. What do you want to talk to me for? I didn't do anything. Well, just a few questions. Yeah. I understand you were doing some kind of experiment today. That's right. I was making a preparation of hydrogen, which, as you know, calls for mossy zinc and sulfuric acid diluted to a three molar solution. Yeah, yeah, that's what it calls for, all right. Uh, so tell me about it. Well, let's see. First, I had to dilute the acid. How'd you do that? Very carefully. Acid should only be diluted by pouring them into water, never water into acid. Why is that? It'll mix better that way, with less chance of it splashing in your face. I poured the acid slowly, stirring at the same time. Then I rinsed the stirring rod in water and placed it on the bench. You're not going to believe this, but once I saw a guy put a stirring rod in his mouth. A good rule in the lab is to put nothing in your mouth. You should never touch the chemicals with your hands, either. How do you know you were diluting sulfuric acid? and not something else. Mix-ups can happen. That's why everything we use is labeled. And then we check and double check those labels before we use them. It's kind of like what Mr. Petrie's always telling us. Be alert and proceed with caution. Yeah, I've heard that. I figured it was time to give the kid a quick test. So what would you have done had you spilled some of that? <sighs> spilled acid can really be dangerous and should be cleaned up right away. The best thing to use is a sodium bicarbonate solution, which Mr. Petrie keeps handy whenever we're working with acids. What if you spill the base? Use the same stuff? Heck no. If you spill a base, you should clean it up with a vinegar solution. That's an acid. You see how it works? If you spill an acid, you clean it up with a base. If you spill a base, you clean it up with an acid. Okay. Now, I know you were careful and all, but let's just suppose, just supposing, that you had spilled some of that acid on your skin. What then? Acids and alkalis will burn your skin. You got to get it off fast, using plenty of running water. And if you should ever get some in your eyes, you should rinse them for 15 straight minutes. I could see this kid wasn't going to fall for any cheap tricks. Anything else? No. That's about it. The experiment went OK, and then I cleaned up, making sure to dump all the chemicals in the right containers. Never down the sink, unless Mr. Petrie tells it's OK. And then I cleaned everything I used and put it back in its proper place. OK, kid, you can go. That's it? I'm off the hook? Uh, yeah, you're clean. Great. It was time to move on to somebody else. Uh, Lieutenant, can I talk to you for a second? Uh, not now, Bruno. I'm busy. I understand you were working with a gas burner today. That's right. Pretty dangerous, isn't it? Well, it can be if you don't know what you're doing, but Mr. Petrie gave us complete instructions. Go on. Well, the first thing I did was to make sure that the burner hose was properly connected to the gas jet and not the compressed air outlet. Then I lit the match first and then turned the burner on. You've got to remember to light the match first, 
otherwise gas could build up in the air. Then I made sure to throw the match into the right container and not the wastebasket. What would you do if there were some volatile materials around like uh, alcohol or ether? Well, I make sure there's none of that around before I light the burner. Okay. So what happened next? Let's see. I had to bend some glass tubing for an experiment I was doing. First, I cut the tubing to the right length. I did this by making a deep scratch in the glass with a file. Then I covered it with a towel and bent it away from me using my thumbs. I fire polished the rough ends. Then I heated the bent spot with the tip of the flame and bent it away from me. Then I set it down to cool. How do you know when it's cool? Well, you can't tell by looking at it. A good way to tell is to bring the back of the hand down just above it. What'd you do with the tubing? I was setting up an experiment, and I needed to run it into a rubber stopper. Sounds like that could get tricky. Yeah, it can be. What you have to do is lubricate it first. Glycerin is best. Then you use a towel to protect your hand and insert the tube slowly using a rotating motion. You gotta be real careful. The stuff breaks easy. Then what? I had to heat some chemicals in a test tube. As always, I made sure the open end of the tube was pointed away from me. Why is that? For safety. When chemicals are heated, they can boil over very quickly and shoot out, especially when they're in a test tube. So what you gotta do is keep the open end of the tube pointed away from you and anyone else. And you should move the flame along the length of the test tube, not just at the bottom. The kid was sharp. I thought I'd find out just how sharp. Let's just say, for the sake of example, that you did something wrong and you wound up with a fire on your hands, uh, an alcohol fire. What would you do, throw water on it? No way. Water would only make that kind of fire spread. Well, what would you do then? Come on, quick, you got a fire on your hands. First, I tell everyone to move away. Then I grab the fire extinguisher. You know how to use it? Sure I do, Mr. Petrie showed us how. And what if someone's clothing caught on fire? Would you use the fire extinguisher? Oh, no. A fire extinguisher should never be used on a person. Then what would you do? I'd smother it using the fire blanket. Located where? Right over there. OK, kid, you can go. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Hope I helped. Yeah, sure. It was one dead end after another. The first case I couldn't figure. There was no evidence of carelessness or neglect or improper supervision. The accident just should not have happened. Okay, I give up. I just can't figure it. You and your students are doing everything right. What are we doing right? Everything. Your lab is clean and well organized. Your chemicals are properly labeled and stored. Your students know how to dress for lab work. They wear safety goggles and aprons. They know how to handle chemicals, how to use a gas burner, how to work with glass. They know what to do in emergency situations. I don't get it. How could there have been an accident here? Accident? What accident? The lab accident here at Jefferson High. This isn't Jefferson High. What'd you say? I said this isn't Jefferson High. Is that right, Bruno? This isn't Jefferson High? It sure isn't, Lieutenant. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Good talking to you. Anytime, Lieutenant. Come on, Bruno, let's go to Jefferson High. Okay, boss. Nice lab you got here. Thanks. Like I was saying, Bruno may not have been the brightest guy in the department, but he was a good man to have around. Don't go away now. 
There's a test coming up. No, you won't be graded. You might even have a little fun with it. Okay, here goes. All the questions are true and false, and they come from the film you've just seen. So grade yourself. Spills can cause accidents, and they should be cleaned up at the end of each period. The answer is false. Spills should be cleaned up immediately. You should smell a chemical by placing your nose directly above the test tube. That's false. You should never smell a chemical directly. It's okay to drink out of a beaker as long as it's clean. Again, the answer is false. You should never drink out of a beaker or other lab containers. Splash-proof safety goggles should be worn at all times. The answer is true, because you never know when an accident might happen. Long hair should be tied back, as it is more stylish that way. That's false. Long hair should be tied back to keep it out of the way. Lab aprons should be worn to protect clothing and skin. The answer is true. Acids should only be diluted by pouring them into water, never water into acid. The answer is true. If you spill an acid, it should be cleaned up with a base. Again, the answer is true. When lighting a burner, you should strike the match before you turn the burner on. The answer is true. The broken ends of glass rods should always be fire polished. Again, that's true. You can tell when a glass rod is cool by looking at it. The answer is false. A glass rod should be lubricated before it's inserted into a rubber stopper. The answer is true. When heating chemicals in a test tube, the open end of the tube should be pointed away from you and anyone else. Again, the answer is true. An alcohol fire should be put out with water. The answer is false. An alcohol fire should be put out with a CO2 fire extinguisher. Hope you did okay. See you around sometime.